Hi, my name is Chin from Open Ink Stand and today I'm going to make two videos about a Namiki Falcon fountain pens. Um, this is a comparison between the stock Namiki Falcon um, soft fine fountain pen and the same pen but with a Spencerian grind modification on it. So the first video will be just the uh, comparisons between the two pens and the second video would be uh, a more in-depth review of the uh, Spencer and Ground pen. So um, so this is the uh, Namiki Falcon pen. It's made by Pilot and it's a very nice weighty pen with a gold clip and you gotta twist it to remove the cap and it reveals this beautiful um, this beautiful gold nib it's 14k and you can see well, well you can't see it but it says SF on it which means soft fine and um to remove the cap, you have to untwist it, which is my only gripe about this pen because I don't like having to keep untwisting and twisting whenever I want to use it. But it does keep the pen, the pen lid, secure. So that's just my only. That's one, one thing I don't like about it. But the rest of the pen is just great. So I'm going to write a little bit with it, just to show you what it looks like. Both pens have been filled with Noodler's ink. This is Noodler's black, it's quite basic. So, I'm going to write something now. lovely pen it's quite wet not right now but if you want to uh, fix that you can just dip it in some water or you know remove the uh, barrel and just kind of like squeeze out a tiny bit a tiny drop of ink so that will um, that will put ink into the feed and it will write much wetter so you can see the difference now I'm gonna write again and maybe that's better oops It's a lovely pen. It's not too wet and it's not too <laughs> dry, I suppose. Um, and if I ever lose this pen, I would uh, buy another one immediately because I like it very much. Um, it says soft fine on it and the reason why people buy this pen and why it's so popular is because soft fine means that it can flex a little. Um, so this adds to the popularity of this pen because um, people think that you can do uh, calligraphy with it. To an extent, it's kind of sort of true but I'll, I'll show you what, what uh, kind of calligraphy you do with it. So, um, it's called soft fine because it's not exactly flex. It's soft enough to be able to flex. So, um, it's not going to be comparable to a dip nib, yet it's, it's not too bad. So, I wrote this without any kind of flex. So, 
this is written just normally. Um, I'm not putting any kind of pressure. But if I do put pressure, now you see how I'm twisting my hand like this. I'll show you why in a second. Um, So you see the line width changes a little bit. The reason why I'm holding it like this instead of like that is because if you press really hard like that, you would ruin the nib. Because you see uh, uh, there are two tines to a nib. So if you hold it down like that, the tine on the right would have more pressure on it then the tine on the left and that would ruin it so if you drag it like that really hard it's gonna kind of look like that you see this is the ink <laughs> this is the nib so this tine would be sprung but if you hold it like this equal pressure will be exerted on both tines so it wouldn't be too too hard on the nib so if you hold it like this, the tine would be spread out equally like that. So this is the ink and this is the tine. So I'm going to flex again. And always flex on the down stroke, never flex upwardly. I N E So to an extent, this pen does kind of flex pretty well. It's hard to um, control because it requires so much pressure to flex. But if I write slowly enough, it's possible. It's possible to create something quite beautiful. Um, another problem with this pen is that if you flex a lot and if you write fast, it creates real rolling because the, uh, the ink does not travel through the feed fast enough. But if you write slow, the ink should be fine and you would not suffer as much real rolling. So, uh, well, you can see it's real loading here. So it's a little bit difficult to control. So if I write it really fast, oops, sometimes it keeps up with the ink, sometimes not. And if it does not, all you got to do again is just remove the barrel and once again just twist the uh, converter a little bit to drop a few drops of ink and the problem should be solved. I'm going to do that now. Just twist a little. You can see the ink falling out. Just a drop is enough. And that kind of refreshes the uh, the feed a little. So now the flexing should have more ink into it. And I'm going to write something, something again. And this time I'm going to flex as much as I dare. Mm. If you flex too much, it will spring the nib, no matter how you hold it. So it's, uh, it's, it's an expensive pen, so um, it's necessary to not flex too much just in just in case you break it you can see that the ink is darker and the flow is better now this pen is about a hundred and forty four dollars I think if you buy it out of the shop oops 
um, it's not too expensive as, as pens go but um, pricey enough that you don't want to uh, ruin it from all the uh, excessive flexing um, I would not recommend too much flexing with this pen like if you want to go out side and just uh, once in a while just flex a little bit and that's fine but it would not be an exclusive um, flexed pen so usually when I go out I just write normally with this pen I would say a uh, 90% of the time and that keeps the pen healthy you know it, the pen is fine if you do that and I flex only when I have to for writing uh, headers or titles but if I keep doing this and that's the only thing I do with this pen I believe it would get sprung much easier I don't know um, I'm not an expert about fountain pens but uh, it's not a pen that I would keep flexing as much as uh, I want to so that's the stock Namiki Falcon pen stock meaning if you buy this from the shop this is exactly what you get and you can do all this stuff right from the shop there is uh, another kind of modification that you can do to your pen which is the uh, Spencer and grind pen so what you do is you buy the exact same pen and you send it to a guy his name is John Mottishaw from nibs.com and he would fix the pen for you so this is the exact same pen Oops. but I sent it to him and he fixes the tip of the nib for me he, he grinds it on a and I don't know something and so he makes it into a a thing called a Spencerian grind in which the idea is that we can write Spencerian with it um, Spencerian is a kind of handwriting in the uh, 1800s, 1880s um, it's very beautiful and it requires a very fine line and heavy sheds have heavy shades to um, execute so the idea is that one can create the same kind of effect with the grind that he made with his pen um, I'm going to show you an example of Spencerian so you can uh, so you can see what it's meant to do all right, so this is an example of Spencerian penmanship by the Spencer brothers themselves. So this is from the original. You can see that um, it's a very fine writing. And fine, I mean it's a very, very thin line that is needed. And there is a very, very small amount of flexing around here here around the capitals so it's not it's not um, flexed very much just very sparingly um, people get this confused with other kinds of writing um, for example a copper plate or ornamental penmanship but I believe that um, John Morty Shaw's intention is that one is able to achieve traditional Spencerian penmanship with his ground pen rather than ornamental penmanship so this is Spencerian and something like this would be um, more like ornamental penmanship the difference is that this is obviously thicker crazier and a lot more shading in many places so this pen, which is the uh, Spencerian Ground Namiki Falcon, would be 
would be able to do the Spencerian script, but it would not be able to do something like that. So um, I would elaborate more of this on the second video, but it's just to show you what it's supposed to do. I'm going to try it out now and write something up for you. So this is exactly the same pen, it's just that the tip has been ground a little. I'll show you the difference. Well, I can tell immediately already which is the Spencerian ground and which is the stock falcon pen. So this is the stock pen and this is the Spencerian grind. Um, you can see that there is a little bulb at the top, at the tip of the point that he has ground away. So that his pen looks sharper, sharper and thinner. I don't know how he does it, but I'm, I think he uh, just grinds it on something. So I will show you what the grind does. I'm going to write this without any pressure. Oops. So this is writing with no pressure. very fine. It's almost like an extra extra fine needle point pen. Um, very thin lines and a little sharp to write with so you can you can hear the nib scratching. It's not a scratchy nib, it's kind of um, toothy kind of scratchy so if you don't like scratchiness you may not like this pen so um, again this is writing without any any shading just to compare what the stock pen does I'm gonna write the same thing with no pressure so this is the stock Namiki Falcon You can see it's pretty thick. Right, so um, this is writing with the uh, Spencerian grain pen with no pressure. You can see it's very fine. And this is writing with the stock pen. And you can see it's, oops, you can see it's pretty thick compared to the Spencerian grind. Um, I'm writing with no pressure right now. So you can see the job that John Mottishaw has put into his pen, that he transformed a pen with this kind of thickness and this is supposed to be soft fine and he transformed that into this pen which is almost uh, oops, a needle point pen um, it doesn't look like much but you can really tell that the difference is between the uh, wetness level of two pens this pen is not very wet at all the flow is quite dry, so it contributes to a thin line. And again, the flexibility on this pen is supposed to be uh, enhanced. So in the work order of his um, service, he says that the pen has been ground to a needle point 
flex which he has done here and the flex is added um, I mean enhanced and also the flow of the pen has been enhanced so so let's try it it's um, quite significant if you compare it between the thick shade and the fine lines so um, it, it, it does um, replicate Spencerian script quite convincingly and you have to remember that Spencerian script only shades sparingly here and there throughout the words as an accent so a little bit here a little bit here maybe a little bit here a little bit here and it but it works fine with this pen um, if one wants to flex the entire word um, it can do that although I feel that it would tax this pen quite a lot so um, If you write slowly and be very careful not to shade on the upstrokes, you can write quite a nice shaded script with it. But of course, you have to be very careful not to spring it. It's such a fragile nib. I wouldn't write like this all the time. Um, because it springs very easily and to be honest actually the right tine on this pen is already a little sprung and I have to say I baby this pen quite a lot so even with me it has sprung a little bit so if, if one would want to write in a Spencerian style it is fine you can you can write um, like this all day long with this pen, and it will be it will be a very nice letter writing pen. Just flex once in a while, not a lot, and be very careful. And maybe once in a while you can write. Um, in all all shades but um, this is kind of risky but so fun to do so as I guess as um, as the end note the Spencerian grind is perfect and perfectly fine for an everyday carry pen as long as you be you are very careful for with it and make sure that you have a very light hand because if you do not have a light hand and you and you know you put a lot of pressure when you write it will ruin the pen and this is a very expensive pen to ruin because it costs a hundred and forty dollars for the pen itself and the service to grind the pen is um, an extra hundred I think so it would be quite an expensive pen to ruin it would be a it would be quite an okay pen to practice Spencer with Although I always recommend using a dip nib, but it's not always convenient to uh, carry a bottle of ink and nib outside. So, to practice proper forms of a letter is fine with this pen. It's not the um, most advisable, but 
if you have the money to burn it's all right if you want to learn Spencerian for uh, seriously I don't think this pen is necessary it's too expensive and does not allow you to learn Spencerian to its uh, to its optimum so if you want to learn Spencerian seriously I recommend just foregoing this pen and just buy a dip nib but if you are primarily a fountain pen user and you just want to play around with Spencerian and you just want a very fine pen that does flexing and you have the money to burn this is a good pen that's how I feel about it if you want a regular pen that you don't have to baby that you can just grab out of your wallet or your pen and just write a grocery list without worrying about springing it then the stock pen is just it's just fine because it's it's actually quite hardy you can go upstroke and downstroke with it and I wouldn't worry about it springing if you press really hard all the time then I would worry but just doing this with no pressure it's a perfectly fine sturdy pen with the Spencerian nib you would have to be very careful even writing without pressure is cause for um, concern especially if you're writing on poor quality paper or paper that has a lot of fibers on it it's very easy for the fibers to get caught in the tines so so this is like um, I don't know a Ferrari <laughs> that you have to be very careful about all the time but a very fine-tuned instrument the stock Falcon is like your average Honda I guess you don't have to baby it too much, it takes care of itself and it's still a very good pen hope this review has helped and uh, my next video is going to be concentrating on just the Spencerian pen and it will go in depth about Spencerian script and the different kinds of writing you can do with it and I will also show you how it compares with a dip nib and other kinds of fine fountain pens. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.